Hey everyone, I'm Brandon Vineyard, and today we're going to talk about seller's closing costs. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to how closing costs actually work, and I've seen this to be more of a problem over the last couple of years with the rise in the number of for sale by owners. So, today's video, we're going to clarify, we're going to go over, and I'm going to show you examples so you know exactly what to expect when you get a contract on your property and how it pans out, and most importantly, how it's going to affect your bottom line. Okay, let's jump right into it. Seller's closing cost. Now, one thing I want to make sure you understand up front, I'm going to be discussing seller closing cost in my area in Northwest Florida. What's traditionally done here is going to be different than it's done in other parts of the state. So if you're an agent watching this, this is not probably going to be the same that we are used to. But for a seller, if you're watching this and you're in Northwest Florida and you're selling your house as a FISBO, or if you're a seller, this is what to expect when you see a contract. Okay, so there's two different contracts used in Florida when it comes to standard contracts. The FAR bar contract and the, what we refer to as the Chris contract. Now the FAR bar is way more popular. You're going to see this honestly probably 9 out of 10 times. At, le at least 8, but more than likely 9 out of 10 times. Um, I really don't have a reason. It's just most agents are taught by their leader, team leaders or office managers or brokers to use the FAR bar. Um, it doesn't matter to me. They both have the same um, goals and same um, principles and everything else. And the closing costs are very similar. We're going to break out each contract for the seller's closing costs so you can be familiar on what to expect and what it looks like, plus how it's going to break out on a HUD-1. So this is the FAR bar contract. Section 9A is the cost to be paid by the seller. Now, I want you to look right under there, the very first thing you're going to see. Uh, if you're not familiar with buying properties in Florida, Florida does not have state income tax. So Florida's money is generated from taxing real property sales. So when the deed's transferred, there's a documentary tax stamp. And that calculation's really easy. Honestly, the easiest way to do it is take the purchase price of the home times .007, and that's what's going to be your deed doc stamps, okay? So if the home is $200,000, it's going to be $1,400, and it's 70 cents per 100 of the purchase price. It's that simple. So a $200,000 home is going to be $1,400. A $100,000 purchase price is going to be $700. So that's customary paid by the seller. The next thing is the owner's policy and charges, okay? On a cash transaction, the two most expensive items are your dock stamps and your owner policy. Everything else is a little fees charged by the title company for recordings and you know office work and that little stuff. But the two bulk things on a cash transaction are deed dock and owner's title policy. These are traditionally put under the seller, as you see, per this contract, okay? Generally, if a seller's paying their closing costs, this is going to be lumped as the seller's closing cost. If the buyer's paying theirs, that's basically all their lender fees for the survey, that kind of stuff. But the next thing you've really got to pay attention to on both these contracts is going to be the repair allowance section. And you're going to notice it says 1.5% if left blank. If you get a contract and if, if it's left blank, like honest to goodness, most of them are going to be, uh, that's something that I do not like. Um, I always like to teach agents to limit these. There's no reason because if this house, like for example, $200,000, each one of these is $3,000. So the first one's $3,000 towards general repair items, $3,000 towards WDO treatment repair items, then $3,000 towards closing out permits. That's $9,000 and that's not the way you do it. And I'll show you at the end of the video just an example of how we word it and how we limit it. Okay. This is um, the next section, and this is where, even though the owner's policy is under that tab before up here, that doesn't mean that they're, you're paying it, okay? Because this contract has another section to designate, actually flag and designate who's paying for it. And this is where you designate the sellers choosing and paying or the buyer. Traditionally for us here, whoever pays for it chooses the title company. And a lot of buyers like controlling that, especially investors. They like having their attorney or whoever to handle it. Um, I'll do another video really soon about how the closing costs on the foreclosure break out um, and how that can be a positive or a negative when it comes to using your own title company. 
So the Chris contract, it's going to be section 5A, okay? And you'll notice on this one, you get taxes and surtaxes on the deed. It's the same thing as the deed doc stamps, it's just worded differently. But this one doesn't have the owner's policy on it. They actually have their own section down here, which I like this way much, much better. But you'll notice right here, here's your blanks again, 1.5 repair items, 1.5 blank, blank, blank. You cannot leave these blank. Just remember, that's if nothing else, learn that. Just make sure because some agents, will, they won't do it intentionally. They'll be blank. They'll just, they're just taught to do it that way. They don't think nothing of it. And if you don't catch it, it could come to, you know, it could come to back to you know, bite you. Section C is where we're going to flag who's doing and paying title work. And it's carried over here to the next page. But this is going to tell exactly, exactly who is going to pay and who is going to choose. Uh, like I said, it is normal 90% of the time for whoever is paying for it to choose. So if you have your seller you know, paying for it on the contract, they're going to choose. If you want to control it, you can. Okay, each contract's gonna have a section for additional terms, and this is just an example. Um, this is where buyers and agents write in anything they can't have in the contract. So you'll see this one a lot, just a, another sentence about contingent upon asphalt home inspection. You'll see that worded a million different ways, but there's already a home inspection contingency inside the contract. That doesn't have to be worded that way, but it doesn't hurt anything. Um, you're going to see this a lot, and this is what you need to pay for. And be sure to check this section because this is where an agent's going to put closing costs. They're going to want you to pay as a seller for the buyer. So seller to pay three percent towards buyer's closing costs slash prepaids. That number can be anywhere from one percent. I mean, it could be half a percent, but one percent up to six. It can never be more than six. And anything over three. Uh, or, or maybe four, you really need to watch because once it gets to that point, it's hard to utilize all that money unless the buyer is being charged a lot of lender junk fees. Um, and this is the way, the last one here, seller limits section 5A lines so and so to a total allowance of $1,500. That's just an example of one way you can limit those three different sections on the contract to help um, you know, make sure that's not left open-ended. Okay, so this is an actual HUD. This is a closing statement. This is what you're going to sign at the closing table, what breaks out all the closing costs, line per line. This is page two because page two has all the fees broken out. So here's your title charges right here. And you'll see owner's title insurance, $1,600. That's on you, the seller side. Six fifty, dollars settlement closing fee. That's part of the closing fee slash title work. You're going to see all these other little fees, doc prep fees, all this kind of stuff. This is all going on when you're paying full title. This is all going on your side. Okay. Now you see over here, this is recording and transfer charges. Basically, this is the taxes. Now the buyer does have some charges over here, but you're paying the big one. State tax stamps and deed. This is your deed doc stamps right here. If, if there was a mortgage on this, there would be a mortgage and the buyer would be paying it. Uh, but there's no mortgage on this HUD or there, it would be right here. So 2142, so see how it's, you know, are the two big chunks? So if this was an actual bank foreclosure and as a purchaser, then the bank typically, you know, pays these big items. You'll have little charges like this charge, um, you know, and small charges. But that's it, I hope that helps. Um, if you like the video, hey, please hit the like button. Uh, make sure and subscribe. I'll have more, uh, especially more REO foreclosure stuff coming out soon. Um, been doing this a long time, and people need a lot of knowledge, and they need practical knowledge from somebody that actually has been doing it. So anyway, appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks.